Bill went back fishing after a scary encounter with a bear, he was determined not to let another one ruin his favorite hobby. But when he met a mother bear who begged him to save her injured baby, he did something as risky as it was unbelievable. Michael was an avid fisherman. This hobby allowed him to connect with the outdoors and de-stress with ease. It was his favorite thing to do in the whole world. Whenever Michael found a free weekend in his calendar, he would escape up into the country with his wife and dog. They had a beautiful little cabin just for this purpose. Occasionally, Michael would come up to the cabin with some friends on a fishing trip, and they would always have a good time, sharing nostalgic stories of their youth while drinking some beer. Without fail, every time they all went away together, they would talk of the bears that inhabited the woods. Michael himself had never come across the bears, but the other men shared their experiences. Some of them had just seen them from a distance upstream, while others spoke of the bears charging at them while they were trying to fish. From what Michael could tell, those encounters seemed quite terrifying. The men who had seen bears always cautioned the others with the warning that they should carry some sort of weapon to defend themselves. Michael, however, did not believe in weapons. He simply thought that if he ever found himself in the woods with a bear, he would be fair game. After all, it wouldn't be their fault that he was in their space. In winter, Michael would find himself trapped in the city, bogged down with work and simply surviving the cold sub-zero temperatures. Paired with an icy wind chill, it often kept them all shut up indoors. This, of course, drove Michael mad. He hated being trapped indoors, especially when he knew he wouldn't be able to go fishing for another two months. So when the spring season finally broke through from the winter, Michael was always ready and waiting to hit the road and disappear into the woods. One particular spring, he did the very same thing, only he couldn't anticipate what was awaiting him in the wilderness. He bundled his equipment, dog, and wife into the car and set off into the country, enthused like a little boy on Christmas Day. When they arrived at the cabin, Michael quickly unloaded the car and then ran off to get a fishing session in before sunset. It was the perfect day in many ways. That evening, when he returned, he told his wife how he planned to go off early the next morning at daybreak to see what he could catch. Encouraging his enthusiasm, she simply motivated him to have a good session the next morning. She didn't realize the drama that was about to ensue. When Michael got to the river, he sat down his gear and had a good look around him. He made sure that the coast was clear and then began to fish. However, after just 30 minutes, he couldn't help but feel that he was being watched. He tried to shrug off the strange sensation and focused more on his fishing. Then he got a bite. He reeled in as quickly and hard as he could, but then he suddenly saw something unexpected. There was a giant bear standing in front of him, stealing his catch. When the realization of what was happening finally kicked in, he reacted before he could think. Feeling quite possessive over his catch, he ran, yelling at the bear. All he knew was that he wasn't about to be attacked while fishing. He had misunderstood the situation, though. The bear had no interest in him. All it wanted was his catch. It simply took the fish and turned its tail, running away from the human. But for Michael, it was too late. In his haste to scare the bear, he ran straight into the river. He caught his leg on a rock and fell straight onto his face. He lifted himself out of the water. All he could think about was the searing pain that came pulsating from his leg. He knew right then and there that he had done some serious damage. He dragged himself to shore and eventually managed to get himself up onto his one fine leg. Then he hobbled painfully home to the cabin. His wife, horrified at what had happened, put him in the car and rushed him off to the hospital. Sure enough, he had been right. He had broken his leg nastily. That was it for the spring fishing season. Now he had to go home and heal. He wouldn't be able to fish until autumn rolled in. Of course, this made Michael very upset. The twelve weeks he had to wait seemed like an eternity. The days crawled by inch by inch. But soon enough, it was time to have a final checkup. Once the doctors deemed him all good to go, Michael was ready to go fishing again. 
Much to his wife's dismay, she was petrified that he would encounter a bear again and that this time he wouldn't be so lucky. But Michael was determined. He wasn't going to let a bear get in the way of doing something he loved. He knew that if he came across the bear again, he would scare it off from his catch or at least confront it in a manner that would not end up with him face down in a river. Two weeks after his final checkup, the car was packed and they were off back into the woods. Once they arrived, Michael took a walk to the river to see if anything had changed. He sat for a while at the water's edge and simply enjoyed the moment. He was so grateful to be back and ready for some action on the fishing side. While he was looking around, he couldn't help but feel that very same feeling of being watched again. He slowly turned around, and sure enough, there behind him was a towering bear. Michael immediately got ready for a confrontation. He wasn't fishing yet this time, so the bear could only have been interested in him. He took a fighting stance and braced himself for what was to come his way. But what happened threw him completely. The bear didn't try to attack him or hurt him in any way. In fact, it stood quite calmly in front of him and stared into his eyes. It was like she was trying to talk to him, but he was too riled up to understand her silent message. Then she stepped backward slightly and pulled forward one of her cubs. Michael hadn't noticed before, but behind her, she had two cubs cowering. She pulled one to the front so that it was at her feet. Then she nudged the squirming cub closer to Michael. He couldn't help but feel terribly confused. What on earth was happening? He thought the big bear wanted him out of her family territory, so he took a step back. But the mother bear simply pushed her cub closer. That's when Michael saw it. The cub was trying to get up and go back to its mommy, but it was limping terribly, quite like when he had broken his leg. Slowly, he approached the little cub and picked it up by the scruff of its neck. He looked at the leg that was bothering the poor little thing and saw the issue straight away. Lodged deep into the little bear's paw was a nasty big thorn. The mother bear was begging him to save her baby from a painful injury she couldn't fix herself. Michael felt a tug at his heartstrings and decided to do something as risky as it was unbelievable. In a swift motion, he pulled the thorn out as quickly as he could. The cub squealed for a moment and then seemed to calm down. The mother perked up at the whimper but relaxed again when she saw that her baby was as good as new. Michael then put the cub down and watched it run back behind its mother. The big bear nudged Michael as a way of saying thank you and then turned and left with her cubs in tow. Left in absolute astonishment, Michael ran home to tell his wife what had just happened. Now he had encountered two adult bears, and yet none of them had tried to harm him. He knew his friends would be terribly envious of his last adventure in the wilderness, and he himself was sure he was never going to forget it. For a hunter, hunting animals is like a common thing for him. When he meets a bear, the same is true. The cub of the female bear falls into the water, and the desperate mother bear can only look at the hunter imploringly, hoping that he can save his child. At this time, the mother bear was completely defenseless, which was the best hunting time for hunters, but strangely, the hunter made amazing moves. Bears are one of the scariest predators in Russia. They are very strong, surprisingly fast and very intelligent. Because of this, people living near there are afraid of this animal. If not adventurers, most people hope to stay away from this animal and pray that they will not become their meal. However, meeting a bear has changed the hunter's life in the future. Alexander was a brave and dignified man who lived on the cold plains of Russia and had to protect his land from any possible danger in order to survive. He had a modest house and lived alone. He would fish or hunt animals in the nearby Great Lakes every day. Alexander was a clever hunter, but he also had a difficult opponent to deal with, and that was the bears, who made a loud noise, were large and dangerous, and caused him a lot of losses. These bears often come to pick up the prey he left outside, break furniture, and even steal chairs, tables, and the like. Because of this, Alexander hated bears very much and always hunted bears. Of course, not everyone likes bear meat, so it doesn't sell well, but Alexander doesn't care about it. He hunts bears for two main purposes. First, 
bears can provide him with a rich meal. Second, every bear he hunts means one bear is missing, and his house can become safer. But it is not easy to find bears to hunt, they are easily frightened, and they prefer to move under the cover of night, which is why Alexander is so upset. One morning, as he was dressing, he suddenly heard a howl full of sorrow from the bear, and was startled because the sound was so close to his house. Alexander felt that this was his lucky day, for it was very unlikely that his prey would come to him during the day. So he rushed into the inner room, unlocked the door, seized his weapon, and quietly opened the window. He put his weapon on the windowsill and aimed at the bear. Everything was too easy, but something stopped him from pulling the trigger. Something was wrong, and the bear seemed to be aware of his presence, but its wailing continued, and it was clear that something had happened. Alexander, cursing his curiosity, laid down his weapon and walked slowly outside. As he went out, the bear came towards him, and Alexander was not afraid of the animal, for the bear did not take radical action at all, and looked at him with sad eyes, almost pleading, and then turned away, looking back at Alexander at every few steps, as if checking whether he was still following himself. Alexander, once more unable to control his curiosity, began to follow the bear carefully, and he knew how dangerous he was now behaving, but the bear did not seem to be annoyed at his presence, but showed the appearance of needing him. Soon, Alexander figured out why the bear approached his house and asked for help. Far away, a few meters from the lake, a bear cub is struggling. It tries to get its head out of the water, but it will soon sink. Alexander watched the great bear he had just followed slowly away from him, as if to get him over to help its cubs. Alexander could hardly believe that the bear would ask him for help because his cub was in danger, and the mother bear seemed to know that the humans who lived in the cabin could help his child. Alexander paused for a moment and weighed his choices. He never liked bears, and the trouble and destruction they caused cost him a lot, and a lot of money was spent in vain. For many years, people often heard that people were injured or died because of bears. But on the other hand, how can he refuse a mother's request to save her child? The hatred of the bear in his heart kept telling him what to do, but the mother bear's cry made him unable to ignore it. Alexander knew what he had to do. He rushed into the lake, and the cub struggled wildly to splash. Alexander tried to carry the baby bear out, but he was hindered. He noticed something wrapped around his legs, and soon he discovered that it was a fishing net he had thrown into the water a few days ago. Alexander reached into his pocket, pulled out the knife he had carried with him, and at last found it and pulled it out. He cut the net that entangled the poor cub and finally saved him. Alexander fished the baby bear out of the water, and when he returned to the shore, he put his coat over the baby bear again, and then began to touch it in order to warm it up, and coughed up the water it had drunk. The mother bear kept a safe distance and watched keenly, but never approached, as if she didn't want to scare Alexander. The thought passed through Alexander's mind. Although the situation was dangerous, he did not feel afraid. After a few tense minutes, the cub coughed and water flowed out of his mouth. After a few more minutes, he finally stood up. It shook off Alexander's coat and looked at him carefully. It made a slight sound. Then, the baby bear returned to his mother. At this time, the mother bear finally let go of her heart and howled happily. She licked the cub curled up on the river bank, trying to dry it, hoping to keep it warm. All Alexander could do was sit by and watch, and he watched the mother bear take care of the injured cub, and all he could think about was his own mother, and he saw himself in the cub when he thought of the mother's concern for him in his childhood. An adventurous person always has a good time, but he can get into trouble, but he still needs his mother's love and support at the end of the day. At this moment, Alexander felt that something had changed in his heart. He no longer regarded bears as dangerous animals. He didn't think there were any creatures worth fearing or killing. All he saw was a family trying to live its own life. They loved each other and supported each other. Suddenly he felt a sense of guilt, and he imagined how many bear families had been destroyed by his hunting, and he dared not think about it. When he swallowed the acidity in his throat, he found that his tears had flowed out of the corner of his eye. 
He vowed never to hurt the bear again for the rest of his life, which was an oath he kept. This encounter with Mother Bear changed Alexander a lot. He bought a lot of land near his home, built a fence around it, marked the boundary, and made a lot of efforts to ensure that the bears living in the forest lived a safe and peaceful life. He even made sure to put away the fishing nets. After each trip, he would go to the lake. It took quite a bit of time and effort, but if it saved a bear, or if her cubs weren't entangled in them, then it was all worth it. To his great surprise, the number of bears in the land he bought exploded. People used to visit his hut and ask to see the natural state and habitat of animals. Alexander was happy that they came to see the bear, certainly from a safe distance. But one thing Alexander never got rid of was his weapons. The good news was that he no longer used them to hunt bears. Instead, he used them to scare away hunters in this land. Under his protection, every few weeks the mother bear and her baby would come and sit opposite the hut, as if to thank Alexander for all he had done for